I got an email from a great kid who used to work for me many years ago, and now he's, you know, he's grown up a lot more, progressed in his career as a jock, and he finally landed his first PD's job. It's in a different market. He's dropping down a market, which happens a lot when you go from being a jock to a PD, sort of like a farm system for baseball or hockey. You usually go from a media market down to a small market to learn how to be a PD, or from a major market down to a medium. And because it is a learning process. Anyway, his question was, when I finally got to talk to him, what goes on in a music meeting? I'm about to do this and I'm not sure I've never seen one. Nobody's ever explained it. I don't really know what to do and I don't want to look stupid. And I thought, wow, what a great lesson for this course. It probably would have never crossed my mind exactly the way he put it to me. So I explained it to him and I'm going to explain it to you exactly what goes on in a radio station's music meeting and how to conduct one and what's the best way to go about it. And if you are a singer or you have a band right now and you're curious as to how songs get on the radio and what would happen if your song was up for you know, judgment on, on a radio station, I'm going to take you through that. You'll see exactly what goes on. You may not like it um, because it's probably not exactly what you think it is and it might not be as wide-eyed and as matter-of-fact as you think it is, but I'm going to tell you the truth. This is exactly what goes on, absolutely goes on inside a radio station when a radio station is trying to choose music to play, current music for their current playlist. Gold is a whole different deal. So, are you ready? Here we go. This is the way a radio station's music meeting goes. You're about to become a PD, like probably, you know, within the next few weeks, or you're anticipating it over the next six months and you're just trying to get ahead of the game, or you're a band or you're a singer and you're kind of wondering at the moment, like, you know, what goes on in a music meeting? What determines how a song gets played on the radio. Well, what I'm going to do today is this lesson is not going to be a normal lesson, but you know, it's definitely something that you need to know. I'm going to make believe that you have never been in a music meeting ever, and you have no idea what actually goes on in them. So I'm going to allow you to be invisible and sit right over my shoulder and watch and I'm going to describe exactly what goes on in a music meeting so that when it's your turn to walk in and people are looking to you as the new PD to do the music meeting, you can just remember this lesson and go, yeah, I got this. No problem. I'm just going to do what Holiday said he did and everything will be fine. And then little by little, you can refine it into doing whatever you want. Not everybody does music meetings the way I did them, but, um, you know, they work for me. You know, I never had a losing radio station ever. Um, so, you know, I turned around some really awful radio stations and made them winners. So, you know, I, I think it works pretty, pretty decent. And as I go through it with you, you go like, well, that seems fairly reasonable. Why wouldn't I do that? So where do we begin? The first thing I think we need to, to, to kind of go over is what is your situation? Do you have a music director or not? That would be one. So if the answer is no, then you're doing the music meeting by yourself. It's just you. And you don't have to do a music meeting anywhere. You could do it in your car. You could do it at home. It's just you listening to songs and choosing which ones to play. Okay, that's first off. If you have a music director, then two more questions pop up. Is it a full-time music director? Which you'll probably only see at a big radio station, you know, a big market like LA, New York, Chicago, that type of thing. You probably would not see it if you're in a small market or even a media market because the stations just can't really afford it. It's unfortunate, but it's just the way it is right now. I, I actually think it's dangerous, but that's a whole nother thing for another lesson. If you have a full-time music director, what this person will be doing will be they will be massaging the music coming off the computer every single day. That should take them three, four, five hours to do that. They're going to be listening to songs that come in, you know, uh, or, or the record companies have basically said, hey, we put these up for download. 
The person will download them, they'll listen to them, they'll try to judge them, they'll look at the charts to see what's going up, see what's going down, where things are, the strength, maybe look at uh, Apple Music sales, what's the ranking, and all of that type of stuff. So a lot of research and a lot of just listening and, and a lot of getting, physically getting the songs so that the music director is ready for the music meeting. If there's a part-time music director, that person is going to have to do the same thing. The trouble is the quality is probably going to be way lower versus a full-time music director. Because if it's a part-time music director, this is probably what it is. The person is probably a jock on the air and they're doing a four-hour show, maybe a five-hour show. Let's, let's look on the upside and say four-hour show. They do a four-hour show, they come off the air, they get a breather for maybe 15 minutes, then they have to go into production and maybe they have to do production for another hour, another hour and a half. So now they're up to five and a half to six hours, at which point then they're gonna have to go online the music, the 24 hours, you know, run the Music Master or Selector systems for the next day's music log. That's probably gonna take them another hour, hour and a half, two hours, hopefully longer if they really care about it, but you know, probably just the minimum would be an hour, you know, and, that, and that's doing a lousy job, really. So their day is shot and they have, you know, almost not much time to listen to music. They'll give it a, they'll give it probably a, you know, as best they can given the time frame, shot at it, but it won't be awesome. It won't be the same as a, as a full-time music director. And you are gonna have to probably pick up the slack on that. So bear that in mind. So that's the music director end of it. For you as a PD, and, and I'm gonna do another lesson on this specifically, it might be the next lesson or a couple down the road, of what you need to do as a PD prior to coming into each week's music meeting. Um, there's certain things, they're not a lot, but there's certain things that you're gonna to need to do so you're prepared when you walk in the door. But I don't wanna tell you about that until you understand what goes on at the music meeting, because it'll make more sense when I explain what you need to do ahead of time. Okay, and for now, all I'll say is from everything that you've done ahead of time, you know walking into the music meeting that you are going to add three songs or two songs or four songs for whatever reasons there are which will be in the other lesson. You just need to know walking in that I only have room on the current playlist for three songs or whatever it is. Okay, let's just say it's three. And because you're going to hear more than that and you have to cut them down to three. You're going to have to eliminate songs. Now, with that in mind, I want to give you a, sort of a general concept and it really pertains even to bands who are watching this right now. If you're a record label and, uh, and, and you, you're, you're a band at a record label, there's going to be an A&R person and the A&R person, you know, along with the label, is going to look at their artists, figure out artist song releases and, you know, and how they're going to do that and when and all of that stuff. So, art, you know, label A might have five releases coming out this week or two. Label B might have four or five. Label C might have three and ten and five and four and six and so and so. So there's a whole bunch of labels and they're all doing releases. All of their A&R people are doing that for each label. But the A&R person at, you know, at label A, say, you know, let's just say it's a virgin, he or she only has to worry about that label. They're not, they're not caring about the rest of them. You, as the PD, you're the A&R person, and this is really, really important to understand and to grasp. You're the A&R person for the music industry at that point. All of those labels have just turned into one big label, and they've got 22 releases, and you've got to pick three. You've got to release three out into the market to the, to the listening public. That's your job. It's not what they, hey, this is our hot release. Doesn't matter. This is our big thing. Doesn't matter. Sorry. You know, I mean, you can certainly listen and all of that stuff, but you're judging all of them for your A&R label, which is your radio station. It's your label, really. And you're the A&R person to the world. That's what it is. So let's jump into the music meeting and I'll tell you, you know, how a typical meeting would go. 
Usually they would be in the music director's office, you know, if they have an office, uh, because that's where usually the downloads are and, uh, you know, and anything else. So the music director already would have listened to a bunch of songs and looked at the charts and, you know, and amassed, let's just say for easy sake, there, he's, he or she has 10 of them. He's got 10 songs to judge. And they don't know that you're only going to choose three. And I wouldn't tell them that until the end. Okay, I never tell them that at the end. So the person will put on the first song and then start to play it. And, and this would be running through my mind. And this is what would be going on as you're watching you know, over my shoulder. I'd be sitting listening to the song. And I'd be listening to the intro where the music is playing. Nobody's singing and going, oh, that's pretty good. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the artist starts to sing, and at that point you're judging the sound of the person's voice, you're judging the lyrics, can you understand them, is the melody with the lyrics decent, are, are they good, you know, what, what's it about, and usually it'll be, this will run through your mind, ah, oh, it's kind of an okay song, I don't know, or, ooh, this is really good, I really, really like this, I'm really looking forward to the hook, or, for the mediocre song or the so-so one, your thought would be maybe the hook will save this because I'm going to gun this thing almost immediately because this is not a good song. But perhaps the hook is good. And you wait to the hook. That's what I would do. I would wait until the hook plays. The hook would play and then it would be judgment time. You know, the song is continuing playing, but I'd be going, yeah, that sucks. I don't think so. And I'd like, you know, just like on, uh, you know, American Idol or uh, Britain's Got Talent or whatever, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, whoosh, got it. Okay. And, you know, they'd stop the song and that would be it. 20, 30 seconds into the song, it's over with. And you're done. If you're a band member, you're done. Rarely does somebody go to the end of a song unless it's really good. I mean, just understand that. If you're really agonizing over that last four-minute part, the part between four minutes and five minutes, Man, don't even bother because um, it probably won't even get listened to. It really won't unless your song is really good. Anyway, the next thing what I would do, and I know a lot of um, a lot of PDs don't do this, but what I would do is I came in from the prep from before with a sheet, and I'd write down you know the title and you know, the artist of whatever this first song we played, and I'd have a score for it. So if it was say so so, I'd be like. You know, I don't know. If I had to, it would be, uh, I'll give it a 6-6. Six, six. How about you? To the music director, and 6-5. Six, okay, 6-6-6-5. Six, 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 and I'd write down the tempo to it. Okay? And that's going to be important. And we'd go to the second song. Same thing would happen. What about this one? 8-2. Eight, 8-5. Eight, Ooh, 8-2-8-5. Eight, eight, Slow song. Okay. And how about this next one? You know, and you play the third one, and maybe this one, you might actually run it almost all the way through. But you might only go like, first lyric, hook, second lyric, hook, and you just stop right there because you've already made up your mind. It's a good song. You don't need to hear it to the end. I mean, they're not going to screw it up. It's a good song. And maybe you go like, ooh, that's, a, that's an 8-1. How about you? That's an 8. Okay, so let's just stop right there for a second. That's the process that you'd go through for all of the songs. And the reason I just said... 8-1 and an 8, and the other ones were an 8-5, you could be, from your work ahead of time, coming in for those three songs that you're going to add, you know that two of those need to be up-tempo because all the other songs on the current playlist or the brunt of them are kind of slow or medium-tempo or sluggish, and you've got a station that you want some tempo, you are specifically looking for, more than anything, an up-tempo song. Just give me one in the ballpark of playing, that's what I'm going to choose. So you may, when choosing time comes for those three, choose the score that, you know, the music director gave an 8 and you gave an 8-1 versus two 8-5s because the 8-5 is slow. Now, you might ultimately add that anyway, but if, uh, if it came down to it, because maybe you had other ones with 9s, the fast one, the one with the tempo, might be the one that actually wins, even though it's not quite as good a song as the other one. A lot of things enter into why you're adding songs. So let me just jump back. So you, you listen to all the songs, and you narrow them down, then you just look at the list, and you go like, you know, okay, well, this is obvious. Let's just take the, the three or four highest testing ones. And then what I would do, 
I would then go to the music director or if anybody else is the room in the room, like maybe there's a third person and you've got three scores, I would then turn to them and go, okay, and I would pit one song against another. So if there were three songs, um, well, three songs would be easy because you're gonna add three. If there were four songs, let's just say, and you had to eliminate one, I'd go, all right, song A against song B, which one? Get the scores, you, know, what, you don't even need scores, just a show of hands, A, 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 great. There's an A. All right, now A against B. Sorry, we just did B. Now A against C, A, okay, A against D, A. Okay, cool, A's in for sure. And then you do the same thing, B against C, B against D. And then C against D to see which one of those you know, hold up. It's kind of like normal research where you pit one thing against another and see where people go, and, you know, when there's a lot of choices, it's easier to narrow stuff down going one against another. And there would be your three ads. And occasionally, sometimes I would do this, um, sometimes on purpose, and sometimes it would just sort of happen in the midst of the meeting, whereas I'm doing it, it's like, you know what? I don't really feel good about all three of these songs, you know, I, I definitely need minimum of two. I don't really need the third one. And I would change the game right then and there. And I'd change say, hey, you know what, guys? I think we're only gonna add two. Let's do that ABC thing again and narrow it down to two. What are the two we need to add? And you'd have the two songs. So let's assume you have the ads. These are what are gonna be the ads. At that point, you need to code them right then and there. Either the music director codes, codes the songs or the PD codes the songs. I always coded my own songs. I liked coding the songs because I intensely believe that for things like tempo and for judging a music style, sound codes, that's what they call them in the computer system, sound codes. You know, it's a sound code of country. That's a sound code of hip hop. That's a sound code of pop or novelty or whatever, you know, or hard rock, whatever you, whatever you want to set it at. You can make a sound code for, you know, Mariah Carey soundalikes, which actually was a sound code for a lot of stations, you know, back in the 80s when it was Mariah, Diana Ross, and uh, Whitney Houston, you know, all had hit songs. People couldn't tell the difference between which one was which. So you actually had to put a sound code for, uh, you know, on all three of those artists to keep them away from each other. Otherwise, people would call and go, why do you keep playing so much Mariah Carey? And you look down at what played and you go like, there wasn't a Mariah Carey song in the last three hours. What are you complaining about? And then you see, oh, it was a Whitney and then there was a Diana Ross. That's why they're complaining. They can't tell the difference because they're not super paying attention. So a lot of reasons to use sound codes. Sound codes. One person should be coding that, especially tempo. I'm going to show you something that I got off of uh, one of the websites, Beats Per Minute or something like that, because I was sort of curious because I wanted to show you tempo codes because I believe in a one to five tempo code. A lot of stations use one to three, but I think it's really hard to delineate a two from a three when you're only on a one, two, three, you know, tempo level. One to five, it's easier because three is obviously a mid-tempo song. Four is a little faster than that. Five is smoking. Like five is like Bob Seger's Get Out of Denver. It's moving. And one would be um, like Celine Dion's The Prayer. Maybe John Legend's All of Me is, uh, or home, um, you know, Michael Buble's home. That would probably be about a two. And anyway, we'll go through that later about tempos when I go through, you know, what you would do prior to a meeting. But you would, you, you would want to code right then and there, okay, what are the three songs? And you'd go like, okay, that's got a four tempo, that's a three, hey, put that back on again. Uh, ooh, that's somewhere between a two and a three. Yeah, it's not, I don't want to make it a three because I'm trying to pick the radio station up Okay, because I think it's down at the moment. I'm gonna give it a two. I'm gonna give it a two um, because if it goes for a slow song in the slot, at least this one's a little bit more up slow song than a regular slow song. So you have to be thinking in those terms when you when you code the music. And again, you know, what is that country? Is it hip hop? Is it is it pop? Is it novelty? You know, is it uh, you know wanker music? I don't know. <laughs> it's that kind of stuff. Okay, so you'd code all that, and again, I can't stress this hard enough. One person should be doing the coding, and after that, I would save the sheet because they're going to come in handy, and I'll explain why in that lesson where I where I go over what you would do prior to this meeting. 
And uh, maybe I, can, I can't think of anything else that would go on in a music meeting. I'm sure there probably is that'll come to me after I've caught this thing and recorded it and, and put it up on YouTube. And if it does, I'll, I'll add that into the other lesson or somewhere down the road. There's a lot of things way beyond what you think goes on in trying to choose music at a radio station. It isn't just simply, oh, that sounds good. Throw it on. It's not that simple. It, it really isn't. There's a lot of factors that go into it that in some instances have nothing to do with the music itself. You know, much like I said, hey, that's a better song, but I need an up-tempo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose the one that's a little bit inferior to the better song. You just kind of do that. There have been times where I've actually passed on a top five Elton John song because I just didn't think it was right for the radio station. I just thought, man, this is just too AC sounding. Um, decent song, not one of his best at the time. I thought, but I love Elton John music. And I thought, this is just kind of okay. It was like the fourth single, fourth or fifth single from the album. Probably never should have been released at all, really, because it just didn't have that level of quality. And, you know, even though it was top five in the country, I, I just passed on it. And you know what? Nobody cared. The audience didn't, hey, why, where's that Elton John? Nothing. Nobody cared. And, and, and the reverse of that were, um, you know, sometimes you hear a song and you're like, man, you know, this thing just needs a shot. This is a great song that nobody's playing. And I would just hit it. And, um, you know, I'll tell you those stories when we get down the road. Uh, because they're stories unto themselves and they're learning experiences unto themselves when you know what you can do and how the thinking goes with them. Bottom line, not everything is cut and dried. Not everything is black and white as to why songs get added. Hope that helps. Hope you now have a feel for what it would be like to actually be in your own music meeting where you're in charge because that's pretty much the way they go. And I uh, hope this uh, whole Music Com Academy is helping you get ahead in your career and will help you definitely when you become a PD. Till the next lesson. See ya.